Known as the Rogue by the Council of Ricks once upon a time, Rick Sanchez travels through universes and planets to hide from any fallout with assassinating four out of the five members. Arriving in the Commonwealth, our hero sets out to survive this new wasteland while he buys time to create a new plan. Which brings us to today's question. Can you beat Fallout 4 as Rick Sanchez? The rules are pretty straightforward. I'm only allowed to use Rick's portal gun and I can only wear father's lab coat as it is the only thing I could find that is anywhere close to what Rick wears. But with that out of the way, let's get into the run. The run begins like many before and like many will continue to do so with creating the character responsible for terrorizing the commonwealth. And then came setting the stats. For the most part this build is very similar to Walter White's setup. 10 in intelligence because I don't know how you play a scientist with anything else. 10 in charisma, but not for talking people into liking him. It's more like telling people what they don't want to hear and in being called out for their bullshit they just accept that this is what it is and have to give him what he wants to make it go away. 3 in luck for bloody mess for bigger booms and to push my dance with YouTube's age restriction. And a 2 in perception because he has two eyes. But now, being set loose in the commonwealth, he recruited Morty, who gave me the biggest hassle any mod has ever given me, and now the run could officially begin. So now, with the task of destroying order as we know it, Rick began his quest by heading to Concord and showing some locals a good time. His portal gun uses alien blaster rounds, so raiders doing their best budget cosplay rendition of a Mad Max film didn't really put up much of a fight. However, where guns and science can solve most problems, being a bully works too, as the raiders at the Drumlin Diner would soon fight out. Easy there, scammer. This doesn't involve you. Ooh. Okay, okay, just take it easy. We'll lower our weapons, alright? Just don't do anything crazy. Oh, oh, should I have been more open and trusting and loving like, oh, I don't know, my now dead best friend? Just keep calm, alright? Here. That's everything I have. Oh boy, looks like you guys have been checking out alternate lives and realizing you don't have it as good, huh? That's too bad. You gotta be kidding me. <sighs> Fine, we'll leave. Just my goddamn luck. After shaking down the raiders and Trudy, Rick and Morty made their way to the busiest police station in the Commonwealth, and even looked like they were going to help the Brotherhood out, only to insult them once the shooting was over. Since the moment we arrived in the Commonwealth, we've been constantly under fire. If you want to continue pitching in, we could use an extra gun on our side. Yeah, I, I, I guess that is what happened, but I, I don't get why I would do that. Continuing on with the quest, Rick stopped by Diamond City to learn that ammo would never be sold to him. So instead, he went to make the most of his portal gun's reserves against a gang of homeless people pretending the prohibition was back on. So anyway, Rick got to blasting. Even Morty picked up a gun to help out. And good thing he did, because aiming with the portal gun is straight up impossible in first person view. Further in, Morty decided that a 10mm was too small and grabbed a submachine gun instead. Only for him to get slapped by someone who played a little too much MLB the show. And to prove that he could still be useful, Morty even threw hands with one of the trigger men. After saving Nick because this universe runs on a set of checks and balances and refuses to progress until checklists are ticked in order, our heroes, if you can call them that, showed the Triggerman what happens when you actually pay attention in science class, and soon arrived at Skinny Malone. Blah blah blah, Skinny was saying something about the old times and Rick got bored so he turned him into a pile of blue ash. With Nick now free from his old lifestyle of being a princess in another castle, Rick made it back to Diamond City to figure out what box needed to be checked next. Make yourself comfortable. When you're trying to find someone who's gone missing, the devil is in the details. Tell me everything you can, no matter how painful it might be. Keep your hands off your ding-dong! So we're talking a small team. Professionals. The kind that know to keep their lips tight when they're on the job. There's a lot of groups in the Commonwealth that take people. Raiders, super mutants, the Gunners, and of course there's the Institute. I'm not disparaging the differently able. Well, they're the boogeymen of the Commonwealth. Something goes wrong, everyone blames them. Easy to see why. 
Those early model synths of theirs strip whole towns for parts, killing everything in their way. Then you got the newer models, good as human, that infiltrate cities and pull strings from the shadows. You know, at least all the death and destruction wasn't for nothing, you know? Yeah, I've heard it all before. But the truth is, people smart enough to build something like me are smart enough to cover their tracks. Turns out the next box to be ticked was hunting down Kellogg, an assassin who worked for the Boogeyman at the Commonwealth. But when you start jumping between realities and toppling societies, this was just another bump in the road. But on the way to Fort Hagen, something unpredicted happened. An alien hit squad was sent after Rick. And man, did these guys mean business. Rick got blasted to hell and back, but this is what happens when Rick gets separated from his Morty. I always do. The best ice cream in the month. The best ice cream in the month. But in a parallel universe where Rick didn't get ass blasted to smithereens, he was able to fight back against the hit squad and grab some much needed ammo in the process. Now inside Fort Hagen, Rick and Morty made their way through the synths. Oh, and Dogmeat was here too because he wouldn't be dismissed for some reason. But the synths were nothing compared to the aliens outside, so this was all just a minor inconvenience. But now they were at Kellogg and could wrap up this witch hunt. Beep, 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 beep. My audio got corrupted. Beep, 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 beep. With his brains scooped up off the floor, our heroes made their way to Good Neighbor and dove through Kellogg's memories. Now it was time to make their way to the Glowing Sea to track down a rogue Institute scientist. But first things first. Show me what you got. Back on track, Rick watched an alien ship get bullied by a Deathclaw, but we all know how this turns out. Rick grabbed the directions of some nearby hippies and then met up with the legend himself. Hold it. Take it nice and slow. No sudden moves. I know you're from the Institute. I'm not stupid. Oof. Sorry. Don't, don't, don't be like that. Don't you lie to me. Ain't that right, homie? Then what do you want with me? Ice cream street, baby! How the hell do you know any of that? No. Why are you even here? Now help me with these bodies. Wait, what? Don't even trip, dog. Luckily, he was able to tell Rick about the ins and outs of the Institute and spilled the beans on the next objective, slapping a courser and stealing its brain ship. The gunners did typical gunner things. Rick arrived at the courser and they tried to put up a fight but ultimately joined Skinny Malone in being turned into a blue pile of ash. Somehow the courser chip survived, so Rick had to go get it decoded. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why is Rick allowing the railroad to decipher the chip when he could do it faster if he just killed them all? And to that, I'll answer your question with another question. Would you believe me if I told you I forgot that that was even an option? You can all blame Dale Gribble for that one. Trust me, you'll see what I mean. With the chip decoded, Rick grabbed the schematics off Virgil and can now move into the final stages of the run. But before going any further, let's take a look at that build. Moving on, first came saving the Minutemen, and in a way I kinda feel sorry for these raiders. They're just running around doing whatever they can to survive and some drunk scientist with a gun that can rip apart molecules comes in and shoots up the place. Anyway, that feeling is left. Rick shot up a Deathclaw and then met up with Preston and Sanctuary to prove himself to them, as if saving them wasn't enough. So Rick ran over to Ten Pines Bluff and watched some pretty severe field accidents occur and watched someone's armor dance at their owner biting the dust. This game is wild sometimes. Reporting back to Sanctuary, Rick was able to build the teleporter allowing him into the Institute. Finally, he could meet with their leader and see what all the hubbub was about. Further inside, Rick saw another Morty trapped in a cage. For your son. You know this guy eats poop, right? Who are you? A cocky Morty can lead to some big problems. Father? Father, help me! But then the unthinkable happened. The leader emerged. It was Quantum Rick! Turns out the Institute was ran by the last of the Council of Ricks, but instead of just shooting him here and now, our Rick, Rick Seath 137, would have to lay low for the time being. So he went and gathered some intel by meeting up with all the other scientists working for the Institute, and then he got given his first mission, retrieving a rogue synth. 
Running through the flotilla was pretty straightforward, except for the one time the fat man guy got him, but other than that it was pretty good. On top of that, the retrieval went way smoother than he thought it would. The job well done, Quantum Rick sent C-137 on a mission to weave in between a battle between three factions and recover more synths. With no choice, Rick went to secure them. Although I was beginning to think that Rick's portal gun may have been a bit overpowered. I mean this thing was eating vertibirds and the brotherhood on the ground didn't fare much better. Rick yelled at the synths and then made it back to Quantum Rick who invited him to a board meeting where he was confident enough to disclose he was dying of Sugma. Finally, a way to take him out without actually having to do anything. So off C-137 went to find an eternal battery for the Institute to solve their power needs, which involved fighting through some heavily armored opposition. But where heavy armor may protect you from ballistic weapons, portal guns are a whole nother story. Rick kept blasting through the Brotherhood and gathered the super battery. Upon returning to the Institute, it was clear that Quantum Rick was trying to rebuild the Council of Ricks. Since Rick C-137 was helping him achieve this goal, he wasn't actually seen as a threat. So C-137 was sent to recover a scientist to aid in the coming tech that would be needed. Um, aren't you? Are you a robot? I mean, it, it, it might eat brains and exhale space aids. We gotta be careful. No! You're here to kidnap me! That's what you people do, isn't it? If you even are people. I've heard all the stories. I know exactly what happens to people when the Institute shows up. Well, it's not happening to me. Wubba lubba dub dub! Fine, fine. With everything in place to move forward, the last steps to a brighter future would be to remove any opposition, and first step was the railroad. Rick probably could have left these guys to live, but he had a better idea, so their fate was sealed. And with only one more faction to deal with, it was time to take the fight to the Brotherhood of Steel. Rick had to sneak through the airport and take out shield generators to allow synths to relay in. And between robots with no moral compass and a pissed off scientist seeking to finish something he started a long time ago, the Institute was able to take over Liberty Prime and crash the Brotherhood blimp into the airport finishing off the faction and winning the day. Now all that was left to do was report back to Quantum Rick and tell him the Institute would be set up for years. But C-137 had a better idea. The Institute was now under new management and the Council of Ricks was officially no more. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a ton. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a ton. And remember guys, at 10,000 subs, we are going to be attempting dust at 1 HP in Fallout New Vegas. Every single day we're getting so close and at this point we're only about 300 subs away. So if you're new to the channel, what are you waiting for? Plus, if you have a suggestion for a challenge run you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. I play all sorts of games, so no challenges off the table. I want to thank all of you that watched to this point, and as always, I have been Chris from Crisis Gaming, and I will see you on the next one.